Hey guys, so I hope you're all doing well, and I just wanted to go over some things that the Lord put in my heart last night, and uh, these are four misconceptions that most Christians have about the rapture, and the first one is that all Christians will go in the rapture. Um, many people believe this and have been taught this their whole life. This is not scriptural. Um, this has nothing to do with eternal salvation. I am not arguing whether a person is once saved, always saved. That is not what this is about. In Revelation chapter 14, we read about two harvest events that take place, and these are the two rapture events. The first one is related to the beginning of the chapter, where first fruits are taken. Um, they're the first 144,000, which is not is a it's a symbolic number that represents the pure in heart. They are taken. Uh, they do not have to go through the tribulation. They are pure and blameless. And the other 144,000 that we see in Revelation 7, they have come out of the Great Tribulation. Those are the ones that have gone through the tri tribulation and they are taken at the second harvest that's mentioned in Revelation 14. We can see from the parable in Matthew 25 that five of the, vir the virgins are wise and five are foolish. In the scriptures, virgins represent Christians. So half of the virgins are taken and half are left. So what is the standard that God goes by? Like, who does he choose to get to go in the first fruits rapture and who's left behind? Well, only God knows a person's heart. But what the scriptures um, teach is that the pure in heart shall see God. In Psalm 24, it says, Who may ascend to the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Revelation 14, the first 144,000 that are offered as first fruits, it says they are the, those who did not defile themselves. They remain virgins. They followed the Lamb wherever He goes. They were purchased from among mankind and offered as first fruits to God and the Lamb. No lie was found in their mouths. They are blameless. These are those who have kept themselves pure. Um, we see in the Church of Philadelphia, it says that um, the Lord will keep this church from the hour of trial that's going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. And it says that those who have, in, have kept the Lord's commands to endure patiently. Um, the Church of Philadelphia, Philadelphia means brotherly love, so we know that the, those who love God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength, who love others as themselves, who walk in humility, walk in repentance and love, these are the people who will be taken in the first fruits rapture. And I also believe the children because they are pure in heart. So who does not go? Well, the Church of Laodicea, which is also found in Revelation 3 along with uh, the Church of Philadelphia, Jesus says, I know your deeds. You're neither hot nor cold. I wish you were one or the other. Because you're lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. You say, I'm rich. I've required wealth. I don't need anything. But you don't realize that you're wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy me from me gold that's refined in the fire so you can become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so that you can see. So these are Christians who have accepted Christ, but they're lukewarm. That means they are not walking with the Lord in purity. The Lord says that they're naked, they're blind, they're pitiful, they're wretched. He doesn't want his bride standing before him on the wedding day looking like this. He wants her pure. He's wanting those who are left behind to repent of their sin and be purified. It says to buy gold refined in the fire, this purity that comes through going through fire. This is the purpose of the Great Tribulation. It's not just to punish the world. If God wanted to just punish the world, he could just come back and kill everybody that's not a Christian. It's about a purification that will take place in the Bride of Christ and a final chance for those who are unbelievers to come into the Kingdom of God. So back to the misconception. The misconception is that all Christians will go in the rapture. And as I said, this is not true. We see in the story of Elijah who was taken to heaven, Elisha looks on as Elijah is taken to heaven. Elisha tears his robes, which in the Bible is symbolic of repentance. And so the left behind Christians will repent and God will use them greatly. Just as God used Elisha, he gave him a double portion of anointing. Double this por the portion of the anointing that Elijah had was given to Elisha. So those who are left behind are going to be used greatly after a time of repentance before the second harvest event to bring in many souls for the kingdom. Second misconception, only Christians are taken in the rapture. This is pretty widely taught uh, in the church that the rapture is for Christians. 
and on the one hand, it's true. The rapture is for Christians, definitely. However, there's a, there's a uh, deception that takes place at the rapture, and not only Christians are going to be missing. So we see this in Matthew 13:30. Jesus tells a parable about the harvest, which is the rapture. The two rapture events are called the harvests, and he talks about gathering the wheat and the weeds at the same time. So the weeds are are taken to a place of torture to be burned is what it says the Christians are taken to really Mount Zion the heavenly Mount Zion uh, his barn a place of protection so if you are left behind um, I want to tell you it does not mean you were not a Christian and maybe your neighbor who was an atheist was taken that does not mean they were taken to heaven there is a place where many will be taken of torture I don't know if it's hell the lake of fire I don't know where it is but it's not a, it's not Mount Zion many many people who are, who will go missing at the time of the rapture will be non-believers and this is going to cause a great confusion among those who are left behind who have been taught that only Christians will make the rapture and they will be confused because they know they're a Christian and their neighbor maybe was a Buddhist or an atheist or a Muslim or something other than a Christian and they are missing so this is very this is going to be a very very confusing time for people because they've been taught wrong um, there will be aliens whatever they are demonic creatures fallen angels whatever they are who will be involved in this deception I don't know exactly what's coming but I know it's a deception I know it will involve aliens and UFOs and um, many who are taken will not be Christians I encourage you to go back and read Joel chapter 2 uh, Revelation chapter 9 Ezekiel chapter 38 these are all describing what's going to take place at the first woe or first harvest or first rapture there there are going to be um, meteors and asteroids and things hitting the earth there's going to be um, all kinds of destruction going on people will be very terrified there's some sort of creature that comes down upon the earth they're evil they're demonic the abyss is opened um, and they Jesus talked about thieves entering the house Joel 2 talks about the thieves breaking into the houses these creatures are going to abduct people um, and they're not going to be Christians the Christians the 144,000 the bride of Christ is sealed before these creatures are allowed to escape from the abyss um, and torture people so whether you make the rapture or not you are sealed by the Holy Spirit and the creatures are not allowed to touch you or harm you but just because you are a Christian does not mean that you will be taken in the first fruits rapture it is those who have lived their lives um, fully committed to the Lord who have laid down their lives who have walked with Christ daily who have put Christ first in their lives who have truly loved the Lord with all their heart soul mind and strength who have prayed to be found worthy to escape what is coming these are the people that the Lord is going to take and I personally believe that the children will be taken I don't know up to what age but the children will are pure in heart and they will be rescued the third misconception is that no one knows the day or hour this is a big misconception <laughs> that almost all Christians believe um, there's one verse in the Bible that they quote where Jesus says of about that day or hour no man knows not even the angels not even the Son of Man only the Father and so they take this verse and they say that nobody can possibly know even Jesus doesn't have, have any idea when this is going to happen only the Father knows and uh, I talk a lot about this in my book at the end of chapter 5 and I compare what we see in um, Matthew 24 with what we see in Revelation chapter 3 where Jesus tells us that if we are not watching he will come at a time when we're not expecting and we will not know at what time he is coming to us there's two different words for know that are mentioned just like the Bible has four different meanings for the word love it has at least two different meanings for the word no the first one is uh, Edo, E-I-D-O it's found in Matthew 24 and it means to intuitively know something or to perceive something just kind of like Jesus is saying nobody intuitively knows when he's coming it's not something you're born with that knowledge you don't know it intuitively you're not going to just perceive it and guess it in, Ma in Revelation 3 he's telling us that uh, the word there is ginosko and it means to learn or to come to the knowledge of something so he's telling us that if we're paying attention watching the signs that we can ginosko we can learn we can come to the knowledge of the time of his coming um, so this is why we study the prophecies we study the signs 
And I don't believe that Christians have to know when he's coming. Obviously, most of us realize he's coming very soon. It's, it's getting to be very obvious that his coming is, is right at the door. It's, it's near. Summer is near. So we know he's coming very, very soon. The reason I am trying to calculate the day and the hour, at least the day, <laughs> is I'm trying to write something for those who are left behind so they understand that it was prophesied in the Bible to take place exactly on the day it happened because the deception will be great for those Christians who are left behind. I'm very concerned and I want them to know that this is the rapture. It's not just an alien invasion and millions of people disappeared. Okay, the fourth misconception is um, that there's going to be a peace treaty in Israel followed by seven years of great tribulation. And the scriptures that are being used for this is uh, in Ezekiel 39, where it talks about burning the weapons uh, for seven years. And also Daniel, Daniel chapter 9, that talks about the 70th week of Daniel, which is se a seven-year period of, tri of time, the final seven-year countdown. Um, so people, a lot of Christians teach that we cannot be here when Daniel's 70th week starts because we would all see it. We would all know, oh, this is the start of the tribulation. and we'd, So it has to happen after the rapture. And also the seven years of burning the weapons, that can't happen until that battle takes place in Ezekiel 39, the battle of Gog and Magog. Then there has to be seven years for the burning of fuel. So there has to be a rapture before that battle. This is basically the only two scriptures that I'm aware of that talk about seven years in the Old Testament, and this is where this teaching comes from, that there are seven years of tribulation. And this is where we have to start putting puzzle pieces together, because Daniel's 70th week actually started in 2009 and ended in 2016, and then the Lord added a second seven-year period. He doubled this final seven-year period, as we saw foreshadowed in the stories in the Old Testament of Jacob and Joseph. A 14 year period, two seven year periods. We know that Jesus said that the days will be shortened. If those days were not shortened, no flesh would survive, but for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. There's no mention of a seven year period of tribulation in the Bible. That seven year count that's mentioned in Ezekiel 39 about the weapons being burned for fuel for seven years cannot take place until Jesus comes back because that's a time of peace on the earth. When we burn the weapons, and we know that peace will not happen, in the, especially in the Middle East, until Jesus returns. That is when the seven, that seven-year count starts. And I talk about this seven-year count from 2023 to 2030, wherein we are burning the weapons for fuel, as Ezekiel 39 tells us. There is a mention of a 1260-day count in Daniel and Revelation, or a time, times, and half of time, wherein the woman of Revelation 12 is taken out of the serpent's reach and the left behind saints are um, persecuted according to Daniel and also according to Revelation 12. But Jesus told us that the days would be shortened. And so we see in Revelation 12, after it says that the woman is taken for 1260 days, it says the devil is cast down to earth and he's full of fury because his time is short. And then the next mention is a time times and half of time wherein the woman is taken to a place prepared for her by God out of the serpent's reach in the wilderness for a time, times, and half a time. So this time has been shortened. The measurement of time has been shortened from um, 360 prophetic days to 40 days. I prove this in my book, if you read the book, um, and I show all of the at least 10 different times where we see foreshadowed a time of tribulation or time in the wilderness is a 40-day period. So a time, times, and half of time would then be a 140-day period. It starts on Pentecost, and it will end on the 14th day, counting from the Feast of Tabernacles. And at that time, we see the sun darkened, the moon not give its light, and the stars fall from the sky, which is the sign that Jesus told us in Matthew 24 would be there um, at the end of the Great Tribulation. Revelation 9 also tells us that there will be a five-month period of judgment on the earth at the opening of the first woe. So these five months include the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh months in Israel. Um, those are the five months of judgment that are coming on the earth. It will start at the beginning of Siva, the month of Sivan in Israel and it will end at the end of the month of Tishrei. We also see a seven-month period mentioned 
in Ezekiel 39, in that verse where it mentions a seven month period of cleansing, it mentions the word memorial and day, which is a clue for those people living in the United States that this is going to take place around Memorial Day, which is the unofficial start of summer in America. Jesus said, you'll, when you see that all of these signs, um, you know that summer is near, even at the door. So the Lord is pointing us to the start of summer here in the States um, as the time of the Great Tribulation. We also see in the fourth trumpet judgment of Revelation 8 that one-third of the days are without light, two-thirds have light. This is talking about this seven-month period, which is exactly 210 days, or seven prophetic months, from Pentecost until the 14th day, counting from the start of Hanukkah. The first two-thirds, or 140 days, there will still be Christians on the earth. That is why there is still light on the earth, because Jesus said, you are the light of the world. So once all of the Christians are removed at the main harvest rapture, the second harvest mentioned in Revelation chapter 14, then all the light is gone and total darkness comes on the earth for the final 70 days or 10 weeks of the seven month period. And this is known as the wrath of God. Christians are not um, appointed unto wrath according to the scriptures. But you, we will have tribulation. In this world, we have tribulation. So um, the Christians will go through the Great Tribulation, many of them, the Left Behind Saints, the two witnesses. However, they will not have to endure the wrath of God, that final 10-week period wherein the Lord really pours out um, His judgment on the earth in a tremendous way. So those are the four misconceptions that I see being taught. Um, again, to remind you, the first one is that all Christians go in the rapture. The second one is that only Christians go in the rapture. The third one is that no one can know the day or the hour or possibly know when Jesus is coming or understand the timeline of the end days, even though the Lord clearly gave us numbers to count with and signs to watch for, and he wanted us to put this all together. He, he sealed it until the end of time, and he, he's going to unseal it in the end times. The fourth misconception is that there are, there's a seven year period of great tribulation after the rapture takes place. This is not true. There's only a five month period of great tribulation on the earth, followed by a 10 week period of the wrath of God. So 140 days of great tribulation followed by 70 days of the wrath of God on the earth. I encourage you to read my book. If you've been left behind um, and are watching this, Please go to my website and you'll understand better um, what the scriptures teach and what timeline you're on according to the Bible. So I pray you guys are blessed today. Have a great day.